Well, even he, the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. Today, we continue with our journey in Lent season towards the cross with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our theme for this Lent season is Eyes on Jesus. This Lent, we will use the metaphor of eyesight to examine how the various people in Mark's Gospel view Jesus during his passion. In most cases, they mis misunderstood who he was and what he was doing. Then again, sometimes by faith, people did recognize him correctly. Today, the theme for today is sleepy eyes. We see in Gethsemane that Jesus' inner circle, Peter, James, and John, cannot keep their eyes open to watch and pray with him for even an hour. How awake have we been, lest we fall prey to temptation? Why does Jesus agree that his Father's will be done? Let us begin our midweek service singing our opening hymn, Our Eyes Behold the Savior's Face.
continue with the opening sentences. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food and due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and, and at the last he will, will stand upon the earth. earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. As we perceive how the people around Jesus were unable to truly see him, let us confess our own failures to respond to this grace and mercy. The disciples discharged a good deal of the woman who anointed Jesus. And we have failed to see that he is pleased with the loving service of his followers. Judas betrayed Jesus out of fear and for financial gain. And we have betrayed our weak faith in him when making difficult decisions. Jesus' closest disciple gave him to sleep rather than watching and praying. And we have preferred physical comfort over spiritual turmoil. Peter failed to keep his own promise of faithfulness to save his skin. And, and we have let Sunday's strength fade when Monday morning dawned. Jesus fulfilled the promise of salvation even as his opponents sought to be rid of him. And he went to the cross because of our sins as well. Pilate wanted to keep his political position. The soldiers saw only a weak man on the cross. And we have let ourselves be deceived by the world's definition of success. Jesus' body and blood are not visible in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. And we have not always looked upon beyond what our eyes can see in the sacrament. His father forsook Jesus on the cross as he took all the punishment we deserve. And we, and we are at times focused on his death efforts instead of fixing our eyes on Jesus. Jesus' followers did not understand before Easter that he was only resting temporarily. And, and we have not always looked beyond our physical length or our online judgment. The angel proclaimed Jesus' resurrection to the woman. And, and we pray that you, Heavenly Father, will forgive us our sin of our sins, sins for Jesus', Jesus sake. sake. Help and us face our eyes on Jesus in each and every time of the Lord of Him for in eternal life, home, where, where we shall see you face to face. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God beside the Lord, who acts for those who wait for him. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalmist is confident that the Lord will always watch over him. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My, my help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not 
slumber. Behold, he who gives Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will give you your life. The Lord will give you going out and your coming in. From, from this time forth and forevermore. Our first reading. Paul urges us to stay awake, always conducting ourselves as we would in daylight, clothed as it were with the Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the 13th chapter of Romans. Of no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summoned up in this world. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not wrong. Love does not do wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Beside this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality in sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our second reading. Jesus urges us to be faithful, on guard, and awake. A reading from the 13th chapter of Mark. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or when the, the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find, find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay away. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the responsory. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Though we have not seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice in joy. He became the source of eternal salvation. Though we have not seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice with joy. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Though, Though we, we have not seen, seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice with joy. joy. We continue with our passion narrative. This length, we are looking at the events of our Lord's passion through the eyes of some of the people who witnessed it. The three disciples near Jesus in Gethsemane as left as Jesus prayed. And we are speechless today as our Lord awakes.
against us to his father's will for himself. The passion of our Lord according to St. Mark the 14th chapter. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and, talking your, and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The follow with him urges us to not only watch, but also to learn the lessons of all Jesus did in his suffering, death, and resurrection. We sing, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this evening comes from our Gospel text, where Mark records Jesus' words to his three disciples. He said, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Here ends our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, amen. You can ask my wife, Sandy, there's been more than one occasion where we are planning to have a movie night together and we try to select a movie on Netflix that we are both interested in. However, if we are watching the movie at night, usually after a long day's work, without fail, after about 20 or 30 minutes, our eyelids start to get extremely heavy. We are unable to focus on the action, and then we'll suddenly notice that the movie has mysteriously lurched forward in the plot, meaning we've missed a scene or two or ten. Sometimes we will pause the movie so we can shake off the cobwebs, but in a very short while, one or both of us will initiate snores of varying volumes a few minutes later. Again, it's not that we aren't interested in the movie. Maybe it has to do with the general fatigue from the day. Maybe it's our own internal clocks. Maybe it's an age thing. I don't know. But whatever the cause may be, I know that we've been embarrassed by our occasional inability to stay awake. And I would suspect that probably many of you have been there too. You probably had times when you were so tired that you could not fight off the Sandman anymore, and you start to snooze. Therefore, we all should be able to identify, I think, with Peter, James, and John, as they succumbed to exhaustion in the Garden of Gethsemane, while Jesus steadfastly watched and prayed to his Father. Of course, it had been a very busy, exciting, scary, confusing roller coaster week for those disciples. No wonder they were so tired, just needing to see the inside of their eyelids for a little while. Who knows if Peter, James, and John had gotten any shut eye since hearing Jesus' sermon about staying awake and watching for the last day. Maybe they had taken it quite literally. They were reclined on the soft grass of the garden. The cool night air was perfect, exceedingly comfortable. And can you think of something more sleep-inducing than watching another person pray? Certainly, if you're at all like me, you've nodded off during your own prayers, falling asleep in the middle of a petition. Let's be honest, a nap was inevitable, right? Yeah, it was. And we would not have done any better than they did. We likewise would have caved into that temptation. The disciples' apparent narcolepsy teaches us to identify sinful humans, even believers, as sleepyheads whose willing spirits cannot overcome the weakness of their flesh. But the marvelous dichotomy of this scene is that Jesus, as Lord of Israel, neither slumbers nor does he sleep. For his eyes were set only upon doing one thing, and that was doing the Father's will. When it came time for all righteousness to be fulfilled, for all the sin of the world to be paid for, it had to be Jesus, only Jesus. Only he could stay awake persevering through the home stretch of his act of obedience to then suffer the pangs of hell in his passive obedience and then to sleep the sleep of death in the tomb for us and for our salvation. Well, tonight in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see him sorrowful and troubled, even to the point of his sacred heart, 
failing right there and then. The weight of the world's sins pressed down upon him in a way that we could never imagine. He fell upon his face in weakness and trembling, begging, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Well, the cup that Jesus spoke of was the cup of his Father's wrath against all the sin of the world. God's wrath is his absolute anger, a furious outpouring of condemnation, the fires and torments of hell, certainly what we deserve and not what the sin the Son of God deserved. Well, the Father answered his Son's prayer. And while it was possible for him to remove the cup, the Father's will was for Jesus to suffer for you and you. He answered Jesus' prayer by giving his Son the strength to accept his good and gracious will. And the Son willingly went into captivity when Judas showed up to betray him. And moments later, Jesus said that all this was done to let the scriptures be fulfilled. Well, no doubt the scriptures recorded in Isaiah 53 is the background here. There the suffering servant of the Lord is said to be stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of God's people, even though he had done no violence and no lies were upon his lips. But why all this punishment upon the innocent victim? Isaiah writes, It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. The Father willed to crush his own son and to make him an offering for the guilt of our sin. Now as unsettling as that may sound to our own sinful ears, we receive this news with awe and thanksgiving that the Lord has done this to save us from our sins. Trusting God's word, which says that his good and gracious will was to love us by sacrificing his only begotten son on our behalf. And make no mistake, the Father eternally loves his son. And Isaiah's prophecy did not stop with the death of Jesus. Rather, it pointed forward to Easter when Jesus appeared to the disciples, gazed upon them with living eyes, and said, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, we're told their eyes looked upon his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. His nail-marked hands speak of God's good will toward you and all sinners. Peace be with you. And the scars on his hands reveal the good and gracious will of God that peace between God and man had been made by him who has, was delivered up for our sin and was raised for our justification. You know, through all of this, Jesus had eyes only for his Father's will, and through this, fulfilled what he had told his disciples in John 6. I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Yes, the good and the gracious will of God is that you set your eyes on Jesus that you would believe in him and have eternal life as a free gift. And with that good news in mind, you can then fall fast asleep in peace tonight and every night and awaken to serve him each morning. When, however, your eyes are closed in death, we are confident that they will be reopened to everlasting life in the resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray for the church around the world, ourselves and all people in their various needs. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. For farmers and ranchers and those who bring food to market, a God who provides favorable weather, bountiful harvest, and relief from both drought and flood. Let us pray to the Lord. Look on them all in your mercy, Heavenly Father. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will drive my feet out of the net. For all who struggle with unemployment or underemployment, with poor living condition or displacement from home, with personal demons or ill health, let us pray to the Lord. Behold, Behold their turmoil, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, and, and grant, grant them relief and hope. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. For all people in authority over communities and countries, all whose decisions affect the climate of the planet and the health of its inhabitants, and all who are charged to maintain justice within their borders and peace among nations, let us pray to the Lord. Gaze, Gaze upon your servants, O Lord. Lord. Protect and guide, and guide them that they may serve you with wisdom, wisdom compassion, and, and courage. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord. For all who serve the Lord, as they care for others, medical personnel and first responders, counselors and advisors, friends and neighbors, professionals and volunteers, let us pray to the Lord. Observe, Observe how they use the gifts, gifts you have given them, O Spirit, spirit and, open and open doors of opportunity for them, them so that many may rejoice, rejoice together. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hiding in the shadow of your wings. For the church around the world, as clergy and lay leaders, seek to proclaim the gospel and faithfully endeavor to share their faith especially in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. See, See their struggle, O Holy Spirit, Spirit, and give them strength to persevere and, and grow. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. For the church, wherever it gathers around word and sacrament, relying on God's steadfast love and faithfulness, and looking forward to the fulfillment of all his precious promises, let us pray to the Lord. Watch, Watch over your church, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Protect and, and defend us again until the day we see you face, face to face. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with prayer for Sunday. Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By, By your mighty power, power defend us from all, from all adversaries that, that may have happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for peace. Let us pray. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsel, and all just words, give, give to us, us your servants, that, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Guide us, waiting, O Lord, and guard us, Satan, that our way we may flood with Christ, and us live with my rest in peace. Thanks be to God. God.